Well, hello. It is Thursday, the 17th of April 2014. This is Wes Fryer, and I'm joined by Amy from her classroom. How are you, Amy? Doing great. Thanks. <laughs> and I am officially medicated, uh, not on just you know crazy stuff, but just antibiotics. So hopefully I'm not going to say anything that sounds too silly, but That's we're right. hoping to be joined by um, Henry, Ingwersen, who is a STEM teacher in Wells, Maine, and this is our first Google Hangout to do with him. And so, anyway, we're uh, we're going to uh, hopefully be interviewing him to talk a little bit about his program because they've been doing a STEM program, I think, about as as long as UConn has. I think it's just a couple years old as well. So, and then Crystal Butcher, who is our uh, grade K three STEM teacher, or our elementary. Yay! There he is. It's Henry. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. That's all right. Self-taught here. We got it. That's We're here okay. now. Glad to be here. How you doing? That's great. No, I'm good. We just started the broadcast, and Amy is here, and she's going to be joined by Crystal. So you got parent-teacher conferences going on right now. Is that right? Yeah, the door is open, and um, I don't formally have conferences. I, I'm not a classroom uh, teacher anymore, so they don't schedule me. But uh, st I have students coming in and out, checking out what's going on with their parents. So. Right, right. Yeah. Well, we did that a couple couple weeks ago for Tuesday. So, well, why don't we just go ahead and uh, do some introductions and and our plan? I think you might have been able to see one of our past shows. Henry's just kind of been to talk about lesson ideas and just sort of to, you know pick your brain and hear about things that you're doing. And we do have a Google Doc that we can use to put some links into. So, um, why don't you just start? Tell us a little bit about you, uh, what you've done in education, and how you came to be a STEM teacher, and then Amy and I will do the same thing, and then we'll just we'll, we'll kind of jump in to talk a little bit about uh, more about your program, about your lessons and stuff. Okay. Well, um, I guess you know my history is I've always been kind of a hands-on guy, and I've um, I've come to the, I've come came to teaching in my mid 40s, a little later in life, and did a lot of different things, and I've always been kind of a, a tinker and learn from experience, so joined the teaching profession, fell in love with it immediately, and I've been here, um, classroom teacher here at Wells Elementary for, oh, on about 16, 15, 16 years, and then two years ago, got the opportunity to help begin this program of um, teaching STEM to third and fourth graders um, here at the school. So I kept my um, beautiful upstairs classroom, which has windows all around. I wish I could show it to you here. And... Um, um, this is my second year, and uh, that's kind of it. I've got um, a background in alternative education, um, have done some stuff with Outward Bound, but during my 15 years as a classroom teacher, I really, um, science was always my thing. I've always kind of taught that way and taught in an interdisciplinary way. So when um, STEM came, kind of gained in popularity, it, it kind of, fit perfectly with a lot of stuff I've already been doing in a lot of ways I've been teaching. So it's more of a conscious way to integrate, which is just really a good way to teach. And uh, uh, really sort of a, uh, automatically kids understand that's a great way to learn. So they, they kind of get it in an unspoken way. So that's what I've been doing. That's and great. Now, now what did you do before you became a, a, a teacher? Well, let me see. I um, I was an excavating contractor for quite a few years, dug a lot of holes, and uh, had, a, had a business, but I wasn't very successful at it. Um, I've done environmental research, spent a lot of time doing that, and um, um, worked in highway construction for quite a few years, spent a few years living in Canada, and I've uh, been raising a family. So I've, I've kind of done quite a bit of different stuff and a lot of different things. I worked... Uh, as a youth and family counselor for quite a few years also. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Well, and you are, are you still in room 308? Is that in Bob's old room or is that, did, yeah. did that change? It's actually 208. Oh, that's right. Room 208. Yeah. Why am I, yeah, I'm putting up, up another floor. Yeah, I'm here. It's, it's a great room and uh, it's good for starting seeds in the spring. There's a lot of, a lot of light comes out and we have a beautiful view of the school backyard, which, which we're really trying to incorporate into the school learning. So. Yeah. Okay, well that's awesome. Well, Amy, you want to tell just a little bit about your background for Henry and for others who may not have tuned in before? Sure. Um, 
I am, I teach fourth and fifth grade STEM here at Lakeview and we started our program three years ago and I actually um, got to develop the program from the ground up. Before that I was a regular classroom teacher, taught fifth grade um, and then also fourth grade and I taught all subjects but my passion is math and science. I actually was pre-med before I changed education my junior year of college so if you change that late you get to have this wonderful thing of having a minor in biology and a minor in chemistry and then also an education degree. So I didn't want to teach high school and I still feel very good about that and so I love the younger kids and I love especially fourth and fifth graders because they get it and you can talk to them with a little more um, they get your jokes a little more and it's just kind of fun. It's just kind of fun to be around them. I don't necessarily have to tailor everything I say to a small child. I, I like my fourth and fifth graders for that reason. And um, when I interviewed for this job we were moving our schools and moving our fourth and fifth grade to the old middle schools and so there was an option to have a fourth special and so I see the kids um, this year it's a little bit different but it has been on a four-day rotation. So I see everybody in the school special ed, you know, everybody, it doesn't matter. I'm just like music, P and art as far as the rotation goes, everyone comes to my class. And so my goal so far has been to try to align myself with the classroom teachers and try to be a support in that, that I kind of do stuff, the hands-on stuff that I never got to when I was in the fourth and fifth grade classrooms and try to get that for them. But I'm also, I was just visiting with Wes, I'm ready to kind of broaden that scope and really just do more stuff that may not exactly line up but still is great stuff for them to learn and kind of open the door to a little bit more freedom in what I'm teaching. So that's kind of where I'm at and we have 620 kids in our school so it is an adventure and I, I really do, I really do enjoy it. Well, there's a lot of similarities there with, with my job and yours. I, I too have been able to kind of help develop my job from the ground up. Mm -hmm. One of my goals, I only see every third and fourth grade class, so I don't see everybody in the school. I see about 200 students. Um, once a week, well now we're on a six-day rotation, so I only get to see them every six days, which is a long stretch. Really tough. Man, that's awful. It makes yeah. it really tough. And um, also just uh, um, doing a lot of science besides the STEM pieces that I'm learning how to do. I really do a lot of the, the science curriculum in the school too. So it's few and far between but the good stuff is is that it's third and fourth grade and I see them 90 minutes when they come in so they get an hour and a half with me. That's awesome. We have a lot of opportunity to um, do some notebook work when it's time to do that but also just dig into the dig into the work and spend some time with it and talk a lot about it and do some thinking and kind of go through the practice piece that you want kids to be yeah. scientists and engineers and, and actually do that piece besides besides just the paperwork and the hands-on you can do some yeah. pieces around it so that's the goal anyway so I love the 90 minutes and I um, wish I had more but <laughs> Well, and Henry, I'm going to be very excited to pick your brain about some different stuff later, but I'll go ahead and let Wes introduce himself so we don't jump ahead. Sorry, Wes. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. This is awesome. Well, so I am uh, at the other four or five campus in Yukon, um, like Amy, but um, our schedule is a little bit different in that I am only seeing the students for one semester, but I get to see them twice a week. So uh, we have 50 minute, I think 50 minute classes, and that, I have loved that. Um, our previous STEM teacher, Chris Simon, um, you know, was on that schedule of all 22 classes once a week, and, um, you know, so I see, we've got just under 600 students, I think, and so it's 11 classes for me, fourth and fifth grade, and, um, you know, I, I love, the, the thing that I've loved the most is, you know, it doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes when, when the kids have that, this was the best day. I just loved this, you know, and they've, that's happened some with coding, that's happened some with kitchen chemistry. Um, it's really, it's really been fun. And so this has been my year to return to the classroom. Um, I started off in educational life as a fourth grade teacher and, um, you know, did technology integration and higher ed and some other things too. So, uh, officially, according to the job scale, this is my sixth year as a classroom teacher, but I think it's like my 17th or 18th year in, in education, and it's really exciting to be in STEM uh, because there is there is so much emphasis in it, and I, 
I find there's a lot of freedom in it to integrate and to be imaginative and to find ways to really help um, you know, win the hearts and minds of kids who might not have been excited about math or excited about science and just, you know, I want kids to love coming to class every day. So, Henry, what is STEM to you? Uh, that kind of started with that when we interviewed Brian Crosby. How, how do you explain to a parent or someone unfamiliar with STEM, what is it and, and what is it that you try to do in your class? Well, what I tell parents is that, that STEM, what STEM stands for is the, the disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and math. And then it's, it's sort of breaking down the traditional barriers um, where we've kind of compartmentalized those disciplines and it's using uh, some or all of those in different combinations um, to uh, and having kids take those skills that we're teaching them and actually apply it so they may take skills if I'm from a science stance which I am a lot they take some core ideas from science that we're exploring and use them and dis use a go through a design challenge and where they're learning a little bit more about about that that core idea of science so it's actually um, mixing the disciplines and applying the knowledge from them, and out of that they get a, a, a more solid understanding of what they're doing. Um, that's kind of how I explain it. And sometimes it's good to actually go through examples of what that means. What does that look like? Um, what can you get a project idea of what of what that might look like when kids are actually doing STEM? So I right. think well too because. I'm learning it more. That's the that's the whole other thing about it too. Is that um, the more I do it, the more I approach some of the areas. Like this year, it's a little bit more engineering. Um, I see how it fits, and I see how we can mix those disciplines. So it's been a learning path for me too. Right. Now I think we have somebody else who's joined there. So Amy, oh, you want to let Crystal introduce herself, oh, or is she going to be fine? There she is! Yay, Crystal! Yay. I've never done one of these. I don't know what I'm doing. Me neither. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Crystal Butcher, and I teach kindergarten through third grade STEM. Oh, great, great. Yeah. So do I look at, can I look at the screen? Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I where you're there. Yeah. It's like, I don't do this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a little bit odd, you know, having both of you there at the same time, but since you haven't, you know, connected, it's also great, you know, to kind of see a little bit how this works and, and everything. So Henry is in Wells, Maine, which is in southern Maine, and he teaches fourth and fifth grade STEM. That's so basically... Cool. Oh, sorry. Yeah, third and fourth grade STEM. So we've got you know some different different grade levels. Crystal, you, uh, you, what did you do before you were a STEM teacher? Because gifted, gifted. I yeah. taught gifted fourth and fifth, and then also second and third grade at the other feeder schools. Yeah. So I had the gifted quite a few groups, but that was all pull out. So to have twenty five to twenty seven kids mixed ability levels in fifty minute times is a different ball game. Mm. Absolutely. Well, Henry, what are some of your favorite lessons that you're doing right now with your kids? I read a little bit in your on your blog about some of the outdoor, um, you know, activities with students identifying, you know, plants and leaves and doing. You know, I just love. I think we need to do more outdoor ed. I was excited and energized by that. But what's what's going on in your room now? And what would you say have been some of your favorite? Um, you know, STEM lessons, because Amy's in the midst of actually planning her year next year. She's getting it all mapped out, so this is very timely. Yes, well, I always need to be doing some kind of planning, you know, and I've try, I try to remember the stuff that worked well and stick with it and use a little bit of that. But um, I'm in my second year, so it's, it's still developing. I'm really trying to use the new next generation science standards and keep an eye on those as, as I develop lessons and try it, because they're great. You know how they mix practice and um, the core ideas and those kind of cross-cutting standards and paying attention to that. Um, the stuff I'm doing this spring is um, with third graders working a lot with um, structure and function of living things, which is one of those um, third grade standards and life cycles. And so we started out by raising um, red worms in the classroom and um, by understanding that that something is as tiny and invisible as a red worm actually has a life cycle and has some structure and function without harming the worm what we're trying to do is is uh, explore and observe and figure out what that is and then the the engineering piece for that and the art piece is for them to uh, design a um, um, a model of a red worm 
that demonstrates structure and function and also demonstrates the life cycle of the redworm. And they do that cooperatively and in groups. And last year that kind of stretched out to four or five lessons. And this year, because I'm cramming more stuff in, I've really tried to do it in three 90-minute lessons. And it seems to be working, although I still feel a little bit rushed. So that I always love. And I think the reason I love that is because um, what I saw again this year that really hit me was when I bring in art and the creative piece where they they pick um, uh, various objects that I picked up at, at this place called Ruth's Reusables and I spread them all over the table and they're able to work collaboratively and go find these objects and actually build these models. I just, this feeling enters the room that really um, for me is like, oh, you know, um, that's what art does I think to kids. And that, and I don't often, I forget to bring the creative piece in being, being such a pure sort of scientist guy. And when I did, when I do that with this worm project, it just, uh, really opens my eyes and I see what it does for the students too. It just allows that. And it also makes me see that art is, is really engineering in a way. There's just such a close relationship between those things. So that's been one of my favorites uh, for the third graders. Uh, fourth graders, we're in our second year of working with this program through the Gulf of Maine Research Institute called Vital Signs. And it's um, a website that was set up for uh, teachers, students, citizen scientists, and also professionals um, to come in and um, build research questions around um, a lot of it's having to do with invasive species. Um, but you can basically, um, since I'm getting more familiar with it, I'm, um, we've developed a question of what's that pool out back is our question. And uh, there's, a, there's this pool behind the school, a pond, and uh, I think it's a vernal pool. And so I'm kind of exploring that question with the students. Is it a vernal pool? And we do it through um, working with this vital science site, which has species ID cards, learning how to use a species ID card, and going out and filling out and gathering data right out back and uh, trying to answer that question together. And that, no, I don't, I'll admit, I, I don't think I know what a vernal pool is. Yeah, it's um, a vernal pool is a springtime pool that usually dries up. And it's unique because... Um, there's only, oh, there's three or four species that kind of inhabit it because there's no fish and they don't have any natural predators. And the species are species like wood frog and the salamander and fairy shrimp. And um, so it's a pretty unique habitat. And um, it's a, it's, that's pretty much what it is. So hmm. it's interesting. So we're trying to figure that out. And, and it's really nice doing that because it's, uh, it's right next door. I mean, we can see it from the window. So anytime we want to do some field research, we just put our boots on and coats and out we go. And it's, it's been a blast. Uh, just kind of getting kids to know what's out there, that sense of place. And so as this is the second year I've done that with my students. And uh, last year it was trees. This year it's the pond. And I, I'm just trying to build that as a place we can go and, um, and just get some conversation going around it too with students and trying to get a conversation going today about you know what do you think about when you look out there what's going on and one of the students mentioned they noticed there's houses close by and he wanted to know what's the effect of building on this pond if it is a pond so it's great how it um, how it allows us to maybe uh, further things out there eventually as, as does technology have a connection uh, besides the website as far as the project for what you do? Like, are you all you all photograph or video or um, and what what? How does technology, I guess, play in play into all that? Um, well, besides the obvious, which, which would be the website, and um, you when you go into that website, you enter data on it, and some of the data that you enter includes photographs. And so, part of the the piece I do is teach kids how to use a camera. And it's um, it's not on the iPad or the iPhone. It's 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 a camera that Vital Science has lent us, just a little Canon Power Shot. Um, but a, a cheap, um, very few moving parts takes excellent photographs, and kids can use it. It's easy to use. So um, we take that out there, and then they have to match their photo evidence with the written evidence on the ID card. So they're learning how to verify and support evidence. And then when they get that on the site, um, they publish it after it's been vetted by. Um, fellow students who go through a criteria checklist 
and then they go ahead and publish and there's a great cheer that enters the room when they hit that publish button. We haven't done any publishing yet, but then when it gets published, it's out there and they get responses from um, other citizen scientists, sometimes from the state um, natural resources department, biologists who look at the site. We'll give them feedback on their data and we're there and, and the, yeah, it's great. So. I, I, I I love that term, citizen scientist, and, and I had just heard an NPR here in the last week or so about a weather project, and I'll try to grab the link here in a minute, um, which is kind of a crowdsourced weather initiative for, for folks to, to gather weather and send in that data, and so anyway, that might have been the first time I'd heard that citizen scientist idea, so that's, that's a cool idea of not only, you know, you're not just watching the weather, but you're collecting data and you're contributing to this body of information, which in some ways is going to become transformative because it's not just that one, you know, National Weather Center, uh, you know, place or, or whatever. And so I think Amy and I have talked about doing weather units. I mean, here we are in Oklahoma, you know, pretty good place to talk about the weather. Here we are in the beginning of, of tornado season. Um, you know, I, I've wanted to go to our national, we have the the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma, which, you know, is probably about 45-minute bus ride or something like that from our school. So uh, that that idea of a citizen scientist, that that's a cool concept. Is, have you heard of that before this project, or is this the first one that you've seen like that where kids are involved in doing that, submitting photos and data? I've heard about it before, but this is the first one I've actually felt like, you know, and, and it's also geared for middle and high school, and I thought, you know, I wonder how this would work for my kids and, and actually doing it. And I, I've been really excited by how they're able to grab a hold and use it. But this is the first one where I've actually I've tried it. Um, there's also uh, some bird information. You know, um, Cornell Labs does a thing with citizen science. They're really heavily involved with um, getting students out into the school grounds to actually identify birds and catalog it. And, and I can't remember the name if it's um, I can't remember the name of the but it's actually if you go into Cornell Labs of Ornithology there's a, there's a whole program you can join and I was thinking of getting involved in that for my third graders next year because we do have birds out back too so. that's cool hey I, I found the link this, this weather thing is called Smart Citizen uh, and it's smartcitizen.me Mm -hmm. So it's a platform to generate participatory processes of people in the cities connecting data knowledge. Cool. That's great. Um, so I'll, I'll drop that link in, and we've got a little bit of chat going. I, I still haven't figured out how to get the Q&A to work in, inside our Google Hangout, but we'll, we'll, we'll put these links in and oh, great. Okay. share those. Go ahead. Oh. I'm upset. Do you, Henry, are you able to actually – are you on a laptop where you could – where you could show us the outside? Yeah, yeah. I think I could just put this window out there. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll move it out. You want me to go? I'm gonna. I'll just step Here. right outside the door. So hang on. Let me get my wild. I have I have been, I've been to Wells. Well, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, whatever's whatever will work, and we don't want you to leave your Wi-Fi area. But no, I'm I've, well. I'm, I've, I've been to your school, but Amy outside. and Crystal haven't. So it is a pretty beautiful shot. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you out. <laughs> Here's my classroom, by the way. I'm going to give you a broad shot of the classroom. Ready? All right. All right, coming out. Not much to see there. That's terrible. Look at that. But there's the... All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna... Now, these are the lab tables that the PTSA bought. Now, we're, we are so fortunate in this district because we really have a lot of support from our PTSA. So last year, I went to a meeting and asked about... How do you like those lab tables? <laughs> that looks great. Wow. Lab tables, they don't shake, so we can actually do stuff on them, look through microscopes and do projects. Um, all right. I'm going to share my skulls with you. There's my skulls. Oh, nice. I've collected these over the years. There's a boa constrictor skull. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. And moose skulls, and we talk a lot about when we do structure and function. You know, it's really helpful. Uh, kids think about. Did you pick those up during your exca excavating business? <laughs> Is that how you found those? That's great. No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Um, I just collected those over the year. I used to, used to do a lot of summer science programs. Okay. I'm going to go outside now and show you what's up. Uh, 
going on here. This is awesome. This virtual field trip, we didn't know we were going to. Oh, yeah. Love it. It reminds me, my son, when he was in sixth grade, they did an, um, a camp down in southern Oklahoma, and the guy who did the, the skulls and skins night, you know, that was awesome with the snake skins and the skulls. So you, you got your own your own skull show. Uh-oh. All right. Okay. Okay, I just we're stepped still, out the door and lost you, so I'm wondering if I can do that. No, no, we can. We're you're, we're still seeing you. We're still seeing you. Are you? Okay. I'm gonna try going out again. Here I go. Yeah, we. Yeah, it slowed. It slowed down a little bit, but Let's see what happens. I might be able to. I don't know if I can keep the camera on you. Can you get me? You see me? Yeah, we can still see you. How you, you doing? See the side. Of, see the side of the building. No, I don't think so, Wes. You don't think so? No, I'm going to show you. Okay, yeah, your video froze. Your video froze. Here's the garden. Oh, shoot. He doesn't know we can't see him. Yeah. Now you're gone, Wes. Yeah, I'm, going, I'm going in. Yeah. We tried. Yeah, we did. Well, you may you may have to record I'm a video. I'm going to go in. Yeah, you may have to record a video. I got it. All right. We're exploring right. the edge. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting. I, yeah, you're I back. We, you got, we yeah, we explored the the edge of your wireless. <laughs> That's all right. There you <laughs> well, you know something. That's called the frontier, Wes. That's, That's right. right. The frontier. The we uh that we haven't done anything at all. We've done some. We did. We've done blogging and we've we've done you know sharing our ideas, but we haven't done anything. You know, class to class, it might be kind of fun. Uh, even if we, I just, you know, had one of our classes do it or whatever to share, share a little bit. Here, here's the back of our school kind of thing. I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't know where we would do that if we would do some outdoor um, exploration. But I would, I would love to to do some of that next year, even if it's, I don't know what that looks like. But you've got me thinking about it because, yeah. you know, we. Hey Wes, we can't see your face. You can't see me. Picture, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see you. Oh, I, I, there we go. I don't okay. know. I can see you. All right, Amy. Have you all have you done anything like that with outdoor? Uh, you well, know, plant um, I went two summers ago. I went to the Purple Martin Research Institute, mm. and we were given a Purple Martin uh, birdhouse and did research and stuff. It's up at my school, but it has other birds in it, and I haven't been. I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not a great bird fan, much less a bird fan who holds birds. Like, I'm not, I don't want to go and hold them. And the whole idea of me going and having to kick birds that have made their nest in my Martin house out so that the Martins would get in there has not been my idea of a good time. Ooh, that's invasive so, species, right? Henry said they're yeah, studying invasive species. They're invading my, yes. Yeah, so, I, there's not, Martins are, um, a cult, are birds that go back to the same place over and over and over again, mm -hmm. and they don't like they will not be the invasive species and so there's other birds that will very easily beat them up and kick them out and so we've never had a colony and I haven't done a good job of trying to establish one but I should it's right outside my window so we could watch it And the the birdhouse actually ratchets down so that we can open and it it will open we have nest boxes we can pull out we could observe the birds like we did at the research institute that I was at I mean I learned how to do all of that but in the grand scheme of things, it just hasn't happened. And so, and then now I have birds living in it, and I'm not sure that they want me to ratchet that house down and kick them out, so I haven't done that either. But, yes, there's an idea. I like to do out, outside stuff. It just hasn't worked out. And with us only have 50-minute class periods, mm -hmm. and where my room is, <laughs> we do go outside to launch rockets and do egg drop outside, but that takes a whole class period basically to walk them to the location do the drops or the launch and then walk right back. I mean, that's yeah. a whole 50 minutes and it goes really fast. Yeah. yeah. So stuff outside in the time frame that we have. And for most of the day, I have just a five minute break between classes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's very quick. And yeah. so we haven't utilized that as much. And I'm right next to the playground. So part of my class time around the lunch and early afternoon the area next to my room is occupied because they're having recess there. And so um, we have to be aware of that as well. 
So yep. I'm not doing a good job outside. Well, yeah. Maureen, Maureen Timinis, if I'm saying Maureen's name right, has put a few other links for citizen science into the, um, the Google Plus uh, site that we've got. So we'll, we'll share those as well, maybe, maybe some other ideas. Crystal, have you done anything as far as outdoor gathering of data or having your kids do we haven't plant done and done natural yet. science? No. Yeah. We've done more just sort of the building stuff you know, less less biological science stuff. So it, it, it's a great, and I do agree with you, Amy. It, it is a time issue. I know when I had, you know, if you don't have that length of time, then you it's really hard to rush those kids outside. I know it. In my, even in my ninety minutes, it's you know, which is like, wow, that's a huge window of time. You but know, when you only see them once every six days. Right. I I have to do the prep stuff and then get them outside, and they have to, they're out there, and you can't rush them out. You've got to. You know, you're trying to get kids to observe and pay attention. Mm -hmm. To do that, you got to slow it down a little bit. So by the time you come in, you almost have to wait till the next lesson then to do the next piece of indoor piece. So, you know, you do need the time, and it's really worth it. Mm -hmm. um, the piece I want to share with you is called Bird uh, BirdSleuth.org, and it's through the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. If you just go on the Cornell Lab, they have a lot of stuff. Um, a couple of really good programs for citizen science, and one that I, one that I want to try next year. And I'm particularly intrigued because when you think about the engineering hook to it, it's that you know, is there habitats that we can work with or change, or what can we do to make this a more bird friendly place? And then we, you're not only doing the science, you know, of birds and habitats, but you're actually then in, can we improve our our world around that, you know, by, by doing some engineering piece. So I'm also, I've always been kind of intrigued by the whole um, life science piece and the engineering opportunities around that because did a little bit more classical engineering stuff last, stuff last fall, last fall, last fall, which was more with physics, which seems to be the natural piece, right? Physics or energy when you're doing engineering. So, wow. It's great. Wow. That makes me think. We have. That makes me think. We have. I'm hearing myself. In the, I'm hearing myself. In the echo. Yeah, we're having a little Max Hedger. We're having a little Max Hedger. You guys hearing the echo too? You guys hearing the echo too? Yeah, I'm getting a little silence, huh. and then it cut picks back huh. up again. Okay. Well, maybe. It'll, okay. Well, maybe it'll clean up. Clean up. Clean up. If we. Ah. Ah. Echo. Echo. <laughs> echo. Right. So, are you guys still hearing an are echo? Are you guys still hearing an echo? Yes. 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 Right. Is, that, is that better? Or am, that I better? Not mute? am I not mute? I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, but mine is too. But mine is too. You've got to have some problems. Have some problems. Hang on. Here. Hang on. <laughs> All right. All right. Have I restored it? Have I restored it? Wow. I don't wow. know what I don't happened. Know what just losing it sort of at the end of your of your sentence, kind of losing it. Okay. How are we doing? Okay. Go ahead, Amy. I'd even tried to use some different speakers. Different well, I was going to ask well, him, since you only have you the, only have the six days, days yeah. try to do projects that are more than one class period, or do you try to do more I'm, you know, my, my, um, I missed a little bit of that, but I'm reading your lips, so I'm working this out. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Hey. So, um. It's hard for me to do one-shot things, but sometimes I do. So there are things you can do in 90 minutes. Most of my um, stuff have been units of three or four or five lessons. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So part of what I do at the beginning of every lesson is take them back to the last one, you know, that piece where you say, um, let's review what happened. And the science note, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay. The science note. Notebook piece is important because you know if, if they're doing something where they're using the notebooks, we start there again. Let's go back to the notebooks. Look at what you last wrote. Look at what we were last thinking about. Let's pick up the conversation. So that's helpful when you have that long stretch. Right. Of six right. Days. Yeah. Now so. are you now are you 
specials rotation, or are you a separate you class altogether? Together. I'm a separate class altogether. I'm partly with one of the specials rotations just because um, they didn't have enough specials, so I had to kind of pop into that position, which is good. But the, also the good thing about not being on the specials is that the classroom teachers come into the class and join me and do the work with me. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. Which has been good. Um, yeah. It's yeah. awesome. It, but you know, it's not a formal relationship that I'm developed. In other words, there's no like, you know, these are the goals and these are these are the expectations. Um, it's very informal, so it it's it's rich depending on who I'm working with. Um, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Some teachers are more into it. Others, you know, don't see science as a as a it, it's too much to grasp for them, and I understand that. But, you know, others, and so I've been doing some stuff because of that, because they're in there, and that's what reminded me of my job, reminds me a lot of yours in some ways. I'm working with the classroom teachers, trying to get them to do the common core reading pieces um, and some math in there, too. So if I'm doing a unit on engineering, um, I try to make sure that I've got some nonfiction stuff that they can then either read ahead of time or read after my class. Yeah. So the integration yeah. piece is a big part of it, but it's also the hardest one to get, hardest thing to get going in the school. As you know, I see you nodding yes. and you relate to yes. that. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. So that's the work, you know. Yeah. But that really is. That the, really is the, the, the revolution. The revolution of study. Yes. Gosh, absolutely. That the integrated. The, the integrated. I think. I think. Of multi multidisciplinary. Not separate. Not separate. Continuous. Right. Continuous. That's it. I mean, I, I think that's why we're in here, and it's such a great opportunity. It's kind of like all of a sudden um, validated what we've, you know, spe I, at least as an elementary teacher, what we know is good teaching and learning is it, it should be integrated. And um, STEM has kind of said, here it is, and it, it's, it's given it back to us. So it's good. Um, one of the things I've been working on is uh, trying out uh, engineering is elementary. Have you heard Boston Museum of Science has a whole bunch of stuff that they've developed over the years, which um, is great. It um, I've got Crystal just mentioned Crystal that, just mentioned that yeah, yeah. she has all she of the has all of the that's part of what she part does. Of what she does. Yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Does she do EIE? Do you, I have. I have. I wrote. I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote and in the past, and in the past, I had most of those. I didn't read. Okay, I'm having and a hard time. Have, with the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> having a hard time with the audio. I'm having a hard time hearing you. So I just so wrote. I a just wrote a unit this year. Oh, okay. I've had this multiple years. Great. So, which which ones have you tried any of them yet? I haven't done them with this. Done this year. Year. It's going to have to be a summer project. Because okay. okay. when I do with principals, had a lot of time for the project. The project. Yeah, and this is the Boston Museum of Science ones. Yes, the engineering. Yes, the engineering is awesome. Okay. Yeah, those are great. I've um I tried two this year, and I I think they're excellent. Um, enjoyed the ones. Enjoyed the ones to do. But there was a lot of different things that had a certain It wasn't a quick little grab. No, they're quite big units, and there's a lot. But, I mean, but, yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Wes, I'm grabbing trouble with the audio. Are you getting it too? Yeah, I am too. Yeah, I am too. Okay. Amy, you might want. You might want to try to mute your try mic. Try to mute your mic. And then let's see if we can do that. How do I do that? It should be at the top, of your, at the top of your screen. There's a microphone. There's a microphone. Last year. Last year. There's a microphone. There's a microphone. I don't know if it's feedback. I don't know if it's from feedback. You. From you. Uh, uh, it's probably on that same it's line. It's probably on the same line. Hang up. Hang up. Look at the top. Look at the top. Or maybe it's on the left. I don't, on the know. Left. I don't know. Mine looks like Mine a looks little like microphone, a with, microphone a line with a line through it. Oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Yeah, I muted it, but then it says if you're speaking to the group, they can't hear you. So, okay. hang on. Let me see if I can actually have a control. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Let's see. Are we still getting that? 
Okay, I'm not getting the okay, echo. I'm not getting the echo. No, I am. No, I am. This is weird. This is weird. Really, it's really a problem. Like a problem. Like not not happen in the middle. Happen in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's, oh, Henry, you're great. Right, so. right, so. You can hear me all right? Yeah. You're yeah, yeah great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Oh, it's <laughs> Henry, tell Henry, us a little, tell us a little, more, little about more about your classroom, your, classroom, your desk, desk your, your setup as far as your facility. Your facility. It, it, it looks like a, high, like school a high school science room to me. Room awesome. To me. awesome. Well, it's great. It's, uh, it's actually, you know, there's no fancy... Um, we, we do have some microscopes that we use um, that kind of have been around the school. I've kind of collected all the science stuff over the years um, as the science guy who's been doing it. So we do have some microscopes. They're the old-fashioned ones with lights and stuff. They're not digital, but they're great. Um, the tables are nice and sturdy, and, and most of the work I do, with, with the rare exception, I have kids working in groups. Um, we do a lot of cooperative work. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And some of these times when the kids come in the classroom, um, all the kids are there, even the kids who are pulled out. So it it is like specials in that regard, is that all the students are here. And I just think it's wonderful because um, kids, you know, as you guys all know, the kid, kids are gifted in so many ways. And the students you would least expect to be able to understand the natural world, understand it. And it changes your thinking about what it is to to understand things and um, also that I just value conversation and talk so much and I'm glad I have 90 minutes to let kids explain their thinking because those kids who are, have trouble writing or have trouble reading seem to be very articulate sometimes verbally and um, um, have amazing ways of, of expressing themselves so so that's great and I, I've you know as far as how that hooks to the physical setup it having tables allows the kids to actually do work cooperatively, which I think is important. So we spend a lot of time talking about teams and how you work in teams and what you do. Like which that. is so vital. Which is so vital. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. And um, just to just to hook back a little bit, talk a little bit about engineering as elementary. I'm glad you're going to be trying it out over there because um, I've just found that it starts with the science concept piece and then it goes to the engineering piece and hooks the two together really well and there's math in there and also the reading reading connection with teachers so it it's naturally integrated they do a really good job with that so, so would, have you all, so have you all bought a STEM curriculum, curriculum or do you just kind of put your stuff put together? together? Um, I do a lot of putting together I've been doing curriculum for quite a while and it's kind of what you know um, it's also it also can be the a uh, uh, bane of my existence because um, I got to remember that when stuff's working really well, it's okay to keep it instead of keep changing it. But I do a lot of mixing and matching. So um, on the wind energy thing that we did, which is really good, we did an um, engineering as elementary piece on that um, with this this book, which is EIE. Um, um, Leaf Catches the Wind, and it's based on a story from Denmark, so there's a lot of social study stuff in there, too. And then it deals a lot with wind energy and um, and how it works, and then the kids design, actually do a design piece with windmills. Um, but then I also added on a piece that I found from um, another book, which I highly recommend. Um, <clears throat> Picture Perfect Science Lessons. Have you ever seen any of these? These are great. No. no. Um, go to the NSTA Press, and this is a great one, especially now that they're getting into the Common Core. They're actually um, linking the science pieces to the Common Core reading and a little bit to the Common Core math. But I found some wind stuff in here, too, so I attached an extra lesson on to the end that um, focused on an engineering piece in here. So I kind of grab stuff. Um, from a few resources that I really seem to like. Oh. That's great. That's hey, great. Officially, hey, officially, I don't think the problem, is, the problem you. is you. Okay. It's happening to, to me too. But I right. see that, I see that your mic is muted. Uh, I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if it'll work. Sure. sure. Amy, but, Amy, but are you, are you still doing a wind doing a wind unit? Done one already? Done one already? Done one already? Are you? I um, um, will be doing we'll wind, wind again before the end of this nine weeks. Of this nine weeks. Okay. I wrote, a grant I wrote a grant and got, and got wind dynamo, dynamo 
starter kit. Starter kit. Nice. From Pitsco. From Pitsco. Yeah. And it came, and it came with, with 30, 30 um, paper uh, windmills. Paper windmills. They are very cheap. They are very cheap. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. what and we for think, what we um, um, probably not worth your money. Just yeah. because, just because we see so many kids. So many kids. Yeah. And yeah. so and I built so a couple, I built a couple of examples, example, example, but but I won't look at them as a class because class they have time. Because time. Yeah. But also, but also they're, they're going to fall apart over and over again. Over again. Right. And they really happen to have, have a headset. No, say. Um, they, like they, earbuds. They, I do. I have. I don't. I don't have a mouth, but I have an. I have earbuds. I can plug those in. Because if if you can plug those in, plug those in. That right. may. That may. It, 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 I don't know. But, I don't know. But I need to do that. I have one that I could. Uh, microphone. Uh, microphone. Well, because we're well, because we're, you are muted, muted, you are muted. You still have the echo. Have the echo. I think it might I think be. It might be. Computer. All right, hang on. It probably is my computer. Okay. Okay. I've had this happen I've before. I've had this happen before. So, so. so. having a headset having on. Having a headset on is usually usually technical difficulty. Technical difficulty. Yeah, earbuds are one of those things. Oh, listen to that. I don't hear the echo anymore. I think he's already plugged in. All right. Okay, that's good. Can you hear us, Henry? Oh shoot! Yes, yes. The echo's gone. Yay, no echo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Right. Henry, what I was telling you is that Pitsco set was very expensive, but it's not very well made. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the demonstration one was really nice, but those paper ones that I bought, for one thing, they're very hard to put together. Yeah. And then if you don't get everything bent to the certain angle that it's supposed to be, then it just won't work. And it was it was very disappointing. Yes. Um, I luckily I had it for the day the Apple Apple corporate came to visit us because um, UConn was distinguished as an Apple distinguished program because of our STEM programs. Mm -hmm. So they came to visit us and brought educators from other parts in the state. And I did it that day, and I also used the app um, Al Gore. Our choice. Mm -hmm. It's an app, and it's an inter it's an interactive ebook. And Wes actually introduced it to me at one of his iPad Media camps. But it has um, whether or not you believe in global warming or whatever you feel about that. Either way, that book has a lot of great information about alternative energy sources. Oh, good. And it's on the iPad, and so then the kids can touch it, and there's graphs that they can interact with, and there's videos embedded in, and it's just really user friendly. And they mm -hmm. blow in the microphone to make the yeah. wind turbine spin. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a great um, interactive book and so I used that and then we also um, so they got uh, they used that and had kind of a research piece that they had mm -hmm. to use the app to do research on wind energy and then we came together and discussed it as a group and then we actually used the demonstration uh, the fan and stuff and kind of showed them now, what did we talk about? What's driving this, and how does the energy convert? And then it has a little motor that it runs, so you can kind mm -hmm. of see how that works. Anyway, it was interesting. Um, I'd like to do more with it next year. Yeah. I also got um, this thing called a powerhouse, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be. Um, it's from Pitsco as well. They were a hundred dollars a piece. <laughs> I ordered three of them. They are very cheaply made. Mm -hmm. It's just all styrofoam and cardboard, and it's. It's so that you can do experiments. You're supposed to be able to do 65 different experiments about um, alternative energy sources and do greenhouse and stuff. The problem is I have the kids for 50 minutes. And so most of the stuff is requires several hours or a whole day or to look at it over a week. So nonetheless, I'm a little frustrated by that. But I am still, I haven't used that this year, but I'm going to try and use that for next year. But yeah, that's right. what I wanted to know nonetheless. Well, I think now that I can hear you, um, that it's great to talk about this because uh, one of the things I, I think that's really good about EIE of Engineering's Elementary, their wind unit called Leaf Catches the Wind, uh -huh. really um, explores the whole idea of what it, what energy is and mm -hmm. um, the fact that energy is 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 transferred from one thing to another, and the kids can actually play around with okay, how do I make that happen? How can right. I get Get more work out of the wind, 
and they actually have energy. I've actually got a, a demonstration piece here because I, I thought we might be talking about this. So the students. Well, I mean, I won't hear it. Hold on a sec. Fourth or fifth. I mean, that right. doesn't make any sense. Right. And there's 20 of them. So. No, it doesn't matter. The kids, you build the bases out of milk cartons. Oh, wow. I mean, it's cool. And I, I had 100. I had a third grade and you collect them. I did this with all my third and fourth graders. So I did it with 180 kids. You you build the base. You put some sand in the bottom. All the directions are in this EIE unit, and then um, yeah. all they do is build different blade designs. Okay. And what you're trying to do is get them to do is turn the wind energy from a fan in the classroom mm -hmm. into energy that will lift up this cup. Oh, to show how like a windmill would work to do the water. Yeah, it's not generating electricity, but it is generating um, mechanical work. Yeah. And so you're turning the energy, the um, energy from the motion of the wind into mechanical motion, and they could put weights in to try and get more work out of it. And you you can deal with experiments and variables and things like that. And this is great because they're dealing with the design aspect of using different materials for mm -hmm. blade design. And it scaffolds up to this with a whole thing with um, building these little model sailboats in the classroom. And you set up these little funny little tracks with uh, two pieces of parallel fishing line and um, straws that you set up on styrofoam, under styrofoam tables. And they actually can get these same materials to move those sailboats. And you talk about the properties of materials and stuff like that. So I would highly recommend something like engineering is elementary to get the kids thinking about energy and then they can also get a chance to play around with designing windmill blades. Right. It's a great thing. And I did this with third and fourth graders and I found it just as exciting with both grade levels. Right. Well part of why we did what well, the motivation behind us doing the wind grant and that mm -hmm. stuff is because here especially where we are in Oklahoma the wind farms are starting to pop up everywhere. Right. So, you know, I really wanted to give the kids an opportunity to have some background information about mm. how that works and what's going on because that obviously is going to be something that in the future would be an op employment opportunity for them or even just to know about it so that we become more educated overall about how this works and it's not just, you know, it, it's there for a reason and we could be very profitable in Oklahoma if we we're using the wind power the way that we could be. Right. So anyway. Right. It's true with Maine too. The same thing's happening with offshore in Maine. We're doing all this um, developing offshore wind mm -hmm. and it's pretty cool. So. Well, yeah. and I'll, I'll do a plug for, for Amy's video. A couple years ago she went to OSU and there was a STEM digital storytelling project and she interviewed um, a student. I, I think that's one of the coolest uh, STEM videos I've ever seen. So, and what Amy, he was an award-winning undergraduate student, right? Who had yeah, and he actually had taken his family off of the grid when he was 15. He made <laughs> solar, and solar panels uh -huh. and his own wind turbine design. And I put the video together as um, using the engineering design process. Oh, and so nice. I was showing, actually, I was showing some of my kids that this year, and one of the kids asked, can we do some stuff with that? And that's what inspired the grant idea because I had showed them that video and they're like, can we make that here? Can we make some, you know, I said, well, I don't have the stuff, but I'll see what I can do about getting it. So I had wrote a grant and that's how we ended up with it then. So well, yeah, we nice. all surprised together. Yeah, and it's nice if we can, you know, I think we're, we're all kind of this, in this conversation about defining STEM. And, right. But I, the other thing about STEM is it has so many local flavors mm -hmm. and um, bringing it home, which you can do. And it's nice to be able to find somebody like that that's like actually from your state and Absolutely. working there. Yeah, and I know we had done um, stuff with the wind with this young fellow from um, Malawi named Joseph Kamkwamba. Have you heard of him? Is he? Yes, I, we, we listened to his book on tape. He's the one, the boy who captured the wind. The boy who captured the wind. And it ties in really good with the wind unit because it looks at this whole idea about design and uh, Amazing transformation that he that he made on his village. Wow. Have you all have you shared that? Because he has a TED talk, doesn't he? About yeah. what he did. Yeah, we shared the TED talk, and that was really great. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I you know, I'm I don't know that I'm going to be planning my whole unit or my year, you know, as Amy kind of kind of is. And that's but it's a good it's a good Kickstarter. I mean, and I Amy's looking at a cycle where she's going to be alternating what she does with what's you know with what students. Uh, 
But um, I definitely think a weather unit and a wind unit, and, and I, I'm going to look up that engineering is elementary, Henry, because that's, that's a fantastic one because I've looked at these kits, too, to order, but then there's always that budgeting thing, and then if you got, you know, and you know, what, what Did you hear Crystal say she has the whole set? Oh, that's awesome. You, she got 20 sets? Yeah, for, she wrote a grant for it. I got it. Oh, fish. my gosh. What? Yeah. So that's, that's awesome. what... That was during the echo period of our conversation. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, she has the whole set, Wes, so don't go buy it. Oh. Just okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great, and everything they do is with stuff you can just find. I mean, you have to buy some stuff, but it's so cheap, and you put it together. So you're doing your own kind of tinkering when you're allowed to uh, get involved with EIE. It's great. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, well, we've, we've got about four minutes left, and um, we, you know, we, we're kind of just figuring this, this out as we go, but one of the things that we're sort of modeled on is uh, Bob Sprankle, who's there at, at Henry's school, has done the Seedlings podcast, and they always share Geek of the Week links, <laughs> and so we've dropped a bunch of links, and I'll kind of compile those in the show notes that we'll share, but uh, there, if there are any other links that you all want to share uh, that might be to resources relating to STEM lessons or, or something... Um, I'll mention uh, I'll mention a couple. Um, we had the uh, eclipse of the moon, the lunar eclipse, this mm -hmm. last week, which I did not get up for. But I I guess I don't know that it was that remarkable here. But there's some amazing photographs, and it's the first of four um, lunar eclipses that'll be in this series. I think the next one's in October. But I found a, a great link that I'll I'll put into the show notes that had a really good infographic from NASA explaining the differences between lunar eclipses and solar eclipses. And, um, you know, just sort of educating students a little bit about, about that. And then the other one, I think I actually just found this one today, is um, I had not heard of this before, but there, is, uh, there are medals for both um, science and then technology innovation. And so this, um, there's, they have a Twitter uh, handle, f um, which is, let's see if it'll come up here, NSTMF. So it's the national... Um, called National Medals, nonprofit devoted to raising the profile of National Medals of Science and National Medal of Technology and Innovation. Well, they have a YouTube channel that has interviews with the, all of these laureates who were awarded um, prizes for you know amazing innovation in in science and technology. And one of the things I've I've tried to start doing is sharing little curiosity links with my students just to kind of pique their interest. And video is a great way to do that. And so here's this YouTube channel with, you know, women and men doing just, who've done amazing things, and so I'm excited to delve into that a little bit more, because I think that's something else that I want to do as far as showing STEM, is showing the successes of women as well as men, showing the eclectic nature of this. It's not mm -hmm. just all coding, it's not just all chemistry, you know, there are so many different ways that people are innovating in the sciences and, and you know, in the STEM fields. So... Anyway, that's a little Geek of the Week link. And I didn't really set you all up with lots of prep time for, you know, sharing additional links. But uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you something that I saw, and I'll have to get you the link for it and send it to you or put it on the document. Um, a friend of mine that's actually, he's going to medical school right now, he posted a link this morning that is like bioengineering using 3D printers. And wow. they're talking about, and that's something we're talking, Wes and I are trying to figure out how to get a 3D printer maybe for us to collaboratively use. And they're already, a couple of weeks ago, um, I watched a video about a man that's made a prosthetic hand for his son at his house with a 3D printer. And he, it's wrist activated, and it was very interesting, and he made it for so cheap. But um, they were talking about how with the 3D printer now, they're able to print like titanium jaw bones that this older lady needed a type, needed a jaw bone and they were able to print it for her and of course it was customized because it was exactly what she needed. They were able to print a liver that was actually that would function and it functioned for like up to 24 hours just wow. printing it with it was they were biosynthesized cells but I just thought wow that technology that is just there and it's, and it's just so cutting edge and it's so interesting that it is really being used mm -hmm. and you know, we're still developing that but that's something that if we could have the opportunity to show our kids how the 3D printer works and then you know turn them on to 
now look how it's being used in the medical field or in other areas as well so that it's not just oh yeah cool we get to print a you know a little car or we get to print something right that, it's more than an iPhone case you can print <laughs> exactly more than an iPhone case so that people they're actually using it to do things like that to print an entire liver which I just think is it baffles my mind Great. But I think it's probably one of the coolest things that I've ever read. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that's I need to keep that. So I'll find that link, Wes. I wasn't prepared to tell you that, but oh, no, I, I was right. going to tell you that, but I wasn't prepared with the link. So I'll get that for you. That's awesome. Well, Amy has joined, has joined Twitter. I don't know if Crystal is on Twitter yet. Henry, I saw you'd had an account, but had no, been you know, Chris, active recently. So that is a it's great... It's not very active, but I'll do my best. Well, it's just... <laughs> It's one of these things I've seen my wife this year. Um, she was in her first Twitter chat last night, and she was so excited uh, because she was there's a thing, something called Noodle Tools and Go Noodle. oh sorry Go Noodle. She's correcting me from the other room, <laughs> uh, but they are videos that she's watching that her kids are watching, and it has a lot to do with resiliency and calm. I, I haven't actually seen them to give the summary, but anyway, Twitter is one of these things that I think it's just it's a great connecting platform and you know, the reason we started this whole STEM Seeds was because we need ideas and we don't have enough time to collaborate. We have basically, you know, almost zero time, not zero, but we have very small amounts of time to collaborate. So we want to we wanna keep the conversation going and we'll, we'll share the link to your, your blog, Henry, and, um, you know, any, any parting things that you'd like to share as far as a link or, or any other kind of closing thoughts because we kind of need to wrap up. We're here at the... I, I just think that the conversation that you've got going through this this whole idea that you're doing, this chat idea that you're doing is wonderful because I, I exactly think it's what we need right now. I think that we've got a lot of work to do and, you know, building content knowledge in the elementary classroom, um, helping teachers feel comfortable about interdisciplinary teaching, but we need the time to communicate about it. Um, we can't expect others to do it. I think the people who are here, you and I and all the all the folks in schools are great teachers. We have to be doing it. So what you're doing with this what is, is great. I think it's really needed. It's needed in Maine also. So I'm really well, that, happy to connect with you guys. It's great. We're thrilled to connect with you. And uh, please let us know of other teachers. I think that's one of the reasons when we started this, we said, you know, we shouldn't keep this as Oklahoma. You know, this, <laughs> this, this what we're doing, you know, is of interest and relevance all over the place. And uh, so, yeah, please. Yeah. You know, let other people know about it and give us other ideas if there's other folks who could, we could be on. I mean, I hope we'll do this at least once a month, maybe twice a month. We don't have a, we haven't really worked out what our what our best schedule is. But we want to say a shout out to Crystal. It was her first time to join us officially, so we'll wave to Crystal. Is she still there? Hey, the game, Crystal. I'm still here. Hi. Very excited. Good, that good luck. Okay. <laughs> and we may uh, we may look at you know a time where we could get together just in person and and record some audio or something because Crystal is doing just amazing stuff with her K three students and that's one of the things that I hope through this is to amplify those ideas and just you know that because I think every lesson I've done this year has been stolen from another teacher and oh, absolutely I, I plan absolutely. to keep doing that yeah. borrowed my wife says are you going <laughs> yeah. to say it's like when we do it. Hi. <laughs> Yay, that's great. How you doing? Oh. Hey. <laughs> that's sweet. Um, <laughs> great. You ought to see. We do this for fun all the time. <laughs> so I think it's like, you know, doing great doing great teaching in schools is a lot like engineering design. There's a lot of like try it, you borrow it, there's no original ideas. I mean there is. We just sort of synthesize stuff together. So it's great. It's great. Mm -hmm. Especially when you're a married team. I steal his, he steals mine. We're okay. good. What do you do? I teach school as well. I teach third and fourth grade. Oh, I mean, I have a combined class. Yeah, yeah. So I teach at a special school for homeless children mm. in Oklahoma City. Wow. So, yeah, so I have, I think I have today, I have 12 students. <laughs> wow, so that sounds amazing. Just, but yeah, they just did is. kitchen chemistry, and you we were did. you were floating uh, diet and mm -hmm. regular drinks this week. And yeah, I did anyway. all of his lessons on um, kitchen chemistry. That he <laughs> oh, that's did. great. That's great. I'm gonna do the cantilevers next, and yeah, it's fun stuff. We're looking for ideas, man. That's oh, what. we're hungry for ideas. for new ideas to engage kids. So. All right, I'll keep trying to think of them, and I just have to get involved with this so I can contribute it easily to you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of science. There's a, some great teachers downstairs too that are K12 teachers that um, that that do some science and among the they have a team of three teachers and they really revolve the kids through those classrooms and 
one teacher is just a science specialist and, and does a lot of stuff with that. It's, it's great. So. You know, something that I'm going to start putting together is like I have basically no science equipment. Like I had to borrow balance scales from a teacher he has and, you know, and we have some, ex, you know, money for funds and things, but I need a good list of science go-to things. Okay. You that, know, whether yeah. it's okay. test tubes, whether We'll it's go back and look scales. at the video of yeah. Henry's class because his desks and science setup that he's got with mm -hmm. the microscopes is, mm -hmm. is awesome. So that would yeah. be good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any closing thoughts, Amy? No, I think it was so nice to meet you, Henry, and just to hear what you're doing and to have that. I'm I'm really excited um, to get to do that today. So it was nice yeah. to visit with you. Yeah, it's good to meet you, Amy, and I I, th I hope we can keep connecting because I think it's uh it's yes. great to do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, for everybody who's listening, we're uh, going to be posting this on stemseeds.org, and we will. Continue the conversation, and uh, we'll be adding any any links that we we've, we've shared today. And thanks for everybody who's tuned in. We had I think we were up to seven viewers, and three have stuck with us. And we'll try to do headsets, so we we know this now. We've, anyway, I'm glad we got that mystery solved. So yay for technology problem solving. So <laughs> all right, good Model idea. We, we have to do it too. So all, all right. right, all right, bye bye. bye. bye, -bye.